For you to be born again of the Spirit of God tonight, I'm going to mention a word that's very little mentioned today, and that's repentance. It's an old-fashioned term today. Not much thought of or not much preached that men and women must repent of their sins and be converted. And the word repentance, my friend, has not only been sitting sorrowful. I've seen men and women sitting in meetings that I've held and I've seen them weep under conviction of sin. I've seen them shed their tears. They've been so sorrowful as God Almighty by the conviction of the Spirit of God. He started to purge the heart and search their soul. And God started to reveal before them their sin and they were sorry. They were ashamed of it. When my friend, for to be born again of the Spirit of God, there's another step. And that's repentance. Turning from. Before the prodigal ever come home, friend, he had to turn his back on the hog pen and arise and go to his father. He couldn't take the hog pen with him. He had to leave it behind. Now, there's many people, my friend, and they'd love to be saved, but they want to bring the hog pen with them. My friend, you'll be damned. The first message my Savior ever preached was a message, repent. The last message he ever preached was the message, repent, and everything in between. And I want to tell you, my friend, repent ye and be converted for the remission of sin. Are you willing to turn from your sin tonight? Are you willing to acknowledge your sin before God? Are you willing to turn from? Are you willing to separate? Are you willing to renounce your sin? No good thing the Bible tells us will he withhold from them that trust him. I was in an open air last night and these young people says, do you have to give up this preacher? Do you have to give up the other? Do you have to give up the next thing to be saved? And why have you to give it up? I want to tell you, my friend, God will never ask you to give anything that's for your good. He not ever asked you to give that up. No good thing will he withhold from them that love him. But my dear friend, you must be willing to forsake all and follow Christ take up the cross and follow me and Joshua looked at the people and, and he looked at the elders and he looked at the judges and he looked at the officers and this is what he said he says man choose you this day whom you'll serve choose they had a choice in their hand do you remember the prophet Elijah when he came unto the people and he said unto them, he says, How long halt ye between two opinions? Come on, you've got a choice to make. There's a call to decision. And let me I tell you, my dear friend, every time you come into a gospel meeting like this, don't you think you go in and out of gospel meetings like these and just remain the same? You don't, you know. How many times has the devil says, Oh, but come back tomorrow night and you'll be far better tomorrow night. You'll, you'll get saved tomorrow night. You just go home tonight and it'll be easier tomorrow night. You just haven't everything properly in place now tonight. And just come back tomorrow night. Have it all. All planned out. I want to tell you, my dear friend, the devil desires to harden that heart of yours. The devil desires to put resistance. The devil desires to put every possible barrier in your way just as he tries to do it now as you sit in that very seat. Every imp of hell, my friend, will seek to keep you from Christ. But I thank God tonight greater is he that is for us and all the powers of hell that be against us. Thank God we worship a victorious Christ. Yes? Yeah? Choose a choice I would to God my friend that I could trust the Lord for every man and woman that's in this gathering I would to God that I could put my arms around each one of you and bring each one of you to heaven with me but my friend I stand before God 
alone. And so will you. Every man shall give an account of himself to God. My friend, if you're going to be saved, you must personally and individually come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Choose ye this day. It's a personal choice. It's on your hands tonight. Mother, your sons could be saved and go to heaven and you can go to hell. Your son's salvation doesn't take mama to the glory land. Father, your little family could be in Christ. But if you're not saved, you'll be lost without them forevermore. You see, friend, your family's salvation, it's not enough to take you to heaven. There's people say, I've been brought up in a good home. My father and mother were Christians. Let me tell you, son, your father and mother are saved. Maybe they're in the glory land tonight. But if you die without personally receiving Christ as your Savior, where Christ is, you'll never be. Is a personal choice. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The question I pose to you tonight, my friend, it's a Jesus question. What will you do with Jesus? Which is called Christ. Time's away, I know it has. Choose you this day. Today, friend. You must make a decision tonight. Do you realize, man, that ere you leave this meeting tonight, the choice will be made? You have a choice concerning Christ and against Him. You will be saved. Are you going to us? You'd rather continue in your sin and go on your way to hell. Or you'll receive Christ as the only Savior from your sin. You'd meet the loving Lord. And know the cleansing of his precious blood. And be instantaneously, eternally saved by the grace of God. What about it tonight? Choose you this day. You know, when I think of that tragedy that happened in our country, I think of those 18 young soldiers going down in their land over that day. I think I can hear the very laughter and the fun of those young men as they travel the roads. Oh, they realize there's danger. But you know, as I sit and I watch UDR go past in the land over the police and I talk to them, and I hear the laughter of them. They don't realize the possibility that around that corner could be eternity. And my friend, the laughter stopped. And the lights went out. And the eternity called. Where are they tonight? I don't know. They're either in heaven with Christ or in hell without him. Oh my God in mercy. Save our people from their sin. Will you come tonight? God has warned you once, yet twice, yet once again. How often has God been calling you? How often has the Spirit of God been dealing with you? How often has the warnings of the Holy Ghost been upon you? And still tonight, man, 
You're still unsealed. You're nearer hell than ever you've been before. God alone knows tonight how soon the call may come for you or me. Are you ready? When Admiral Greyston said to Woodrow Wilson that he was dying, the president looked him in the face and he said three words. He said, I am ready. My dear friend, listen. God grant you're ready tonight. And if not, may God make you ready now for Jesus' sake.